Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Hungarian potato and sausage soup. That's right, when the going gets tough, the tough makes soup. And while pretty much all soups would be considered comfort food, with only a few exceptions, sorry, gazpacho, there are certain recipes that comfort the body, mind, and soul in even a more profound way. And this amazingly delicious and hearty soup is in that class. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by adding a nice big hunk of butter to this soup pot placed over medium heat. And yes, olive oil would work if you want to make this animal free. And then once that melts, we'll go ahead and brown up some Hungarian sausage, which we've sliced into rounds. Or if we can't find Hungarian sausage, a sausage we can find from a country as close to Hungary as possible, which for me was Poland. So I'm using some beautifully smoky pork Polish sausage. But really, for a soup like this, pretty much any sausage will work. So that will be up to you. I mean, you are after all the goose sausage of how to use sausage. And what we'll do is cook this stirring for a few minutes or until it's lightly browned. And if you want, you could just stir this and not worry if each side is getting a perfect browning. But if you're really into it and that kind of stuff bothers you, you could take the time to flip these pieces over individually, which I did to a few, until I lost interest and decided that was not a big deal. But anyway, like I said, we'll go ahead and cook that stirring until lightly brown, at which point we will remove to a bowl with a slotted spoon, leaving behind what's basically a sausage-infused butter. And by the way, pro tip, if you know you're going to remove sausage from a pot with a slotted spoon, just start with a slotted spoon and use that to stir it while it cooks. See, because now I have to wash two spoons, which is unfortunate. But anyway, we'll go ahead and remove that and reserve it until needed, at which point we will toss a diced onion into that gloriously flavored fat, along with a nice big pinch of salt, and we will cook those stirring, still on medium heat, until they just start to turn translucent. And even though it kind of looks like it, we're not really browning these. See, what's happened is the salt has drawn moisture out of the onion, which has deglazed those caramelized meat juices from the bottom of the pan, giving it this fairly well-browned appearance. So I'm just pointing that out so you don't think you have to cook these for a long time until they get browned. And then what we'll do once our onions do turn translucent and start to soften is stir in a couple tablespoons of flour, which, by the way, is a little bit unusual for a potato soup. Okay, generally we'll just mash or crush or puree some of the potatoes in when it's done and use that to thicken it. But this time we're not going to. All right, we're going to leave our potato cubes intact and rely on this little bit of flour to help give the soup its body. So we'll go ahead and cook that flour stirring for about two or three minutes, at which point we will add some minced garlic and a nice big spoon of Hungarian paprika, or any paprika. All right, I think everyone would agree that Spanish paprika would work just as well. But regardless, once that's in there, we'll go ahead and cook that stirring for just about one minute. All right, just basically to take the raw edge off the garlic. And we don't want to go too long, because if we happen to burn that paprika, we will ruin the soup. So like I said, just about a minute or so should be perfect. And then once that's set, we can go ahead and pour in our chicken broth. And give that all a nice stir, while at the same time raising our heat to high. And we're doing that, of course, because we want this to come up to a simmer. And while that happens, because this does have flour in it, we do want to give it the occasional stir to make sure none of that is sticking to the bottom and forming lumps, which it most likely will not be, but do it anyway. All right, half the fun of making a homemade soup is stirring it once in a while. And then what we'll do once this does come to a simmer is toss in the secret ingredient, a couple cups of chopped green cabbage. And if you can, try to get all of it in the pot. And we will stir that in and let it cook for about two minutes or until it just loses its stiffness. And by the way, even if you don't think you like cabbage, be sure to add it to this. All right, when you simmer cabbage in a soup like this, it gets beautifully sweet and really helps elevate all the other ingredients. So that's what I did. And a few minutes later, my pot looked like this. And at this point, we can add a couple large russet potatoes that we peeled and cut into cubes. And please know, you can cut your potatoes into any size you want, but there are two things you should consider. All right, number one, the pieces should be small enough to fit on a soup spoon. And then also, they should all be about the same size. And that's just so they all get soft and tender in about the same amount of time. So we will stir those in, and then wait for this to come back to a simmer. And while we're waiting for that, we can add the rest of our seasonings, which will be some freshly ground black pepper, some cayenne, plus one bay leaf. Plus, if you think it needs it, and I did, another splash of broth or water. And obviously, that will depend on how thick you want your soup. And you can, if you want, just add it later once you see how things are going since that is just you cooking. But I felt like I needed another little splash, so I added it now. And then what we'll do once all those tough decisions have been made and our soups come back to a simmer is we will give that a stir and then lower our heat to medium low. And we'll let that simmer for about 30 minutes, stirring occasionally. 
or until our potatoes are very, very soft and tender. And if you're not sure, go ahead and try to smash one against the side of the pot. And if it easily mashes, you're done. But if it doesn't, you're not, so let it cook. And that's it, once our taters are tender, we'll go ahead and stir our sausage back in. And then once that's been accomplished, we will add the other secret ingredient. And that would be a couple tablespoons of white distilled vinegar, which is generally what we add when we want to increase the acidity of a dish without adding any additional flavors. But having said that, some apple cider vinegar would work, or maybe a white wine vinegar. But no matter what you use, once that's stirred in, we will simply let this simmer for another 10 minutes. And that's it. Our Hungarian potato and sausage soup is done. As soon as we check it for salt. All right, I know we put some in earlier, but potato soups are famous for needing more salt. So I gave mine a taste and it did. So I stirred in a little more. And of course that will depend on how salty your sausage is, which is why we don't add a lot earlier. But once it's done, you always want to taste and adjust. And we'll give it one last taste to make sure. And as soon as you love it, we can go ahead and turn off the heat and grab a ladle and serve this up. And as you can see, even though we didn't mash or puree any of the potatoes in, that little bit of flour actually thickened this up beautifully. And of course, some of the smaller pieces of potato will fall apart and add a little bit of additional starchiness to this. But the vast majority of those potato cubes are intact. And at this point, we can go ahead and serve it up. And then to finish this properly, we have to, we must, garnish the top with some sour cream. And not just a little. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put on two nice dollops. Okay, if you're not slightly embarrassed by how much you're putting on, it's probably not enough. And then for a final touch, we can do some sliced green onions, or chives, or parsley, or dill. They all would be fine. And then I finished up with one last shake of cayenne. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and grab a spoon and dig in. And above and beyond being incredibly hearty and comforting, this is just an incredibly delicious and flavorful soup. Okay, we have the obvious savoriness from our sausage, but also we have that earthy sweetness from the onions and the cabbage, balanced perfectly and elevated by that little splash of vinegar and the sour cream. And of course, making all this possible are soft and tender potatoes. So I really do absolutely love everything about this. And probably the only way this gets any better would be eating this with a nice big hunk of crusty buttered bread. So if you're on one of these new trendy high carb diets, give that a try. Otherwise, feel free to enjoy this as is. And I think you'll agree it's one of the best soups you've had in a long time. So for all those reasons and more, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.